Hallelujah. Test you're going through. Hallelujah. The Lord knows your location. He knows where you are. Hallelujah. If you believe that somebody, why don't you shout your way out of your dilemma right now? Why don't you shout your way out of your trouble right now? Hallelujah. Why don't you give the Lord some high praise in the house and glorify his great holy and mighty name? Oh, we thank you for your mighty anointing, presence, and power. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. I want you to remain standing as a man of God comes this evening. I'm going to tell you, I don't know whenever I have felt more of the will of God right now than I feel. I feel like we are in direct harmony in the Holy Ghost. And God orchestrates everything. Oh, shut up, Do you believe that? Do you believe God orchestrates everything? Yes. Hallelujah. And I am ready for God to do a sovereign work in this house. Man of God, come right now. Hallelujah. Pour your heart out. Let's welcome Brother Mark Morgan from San Francisco, California. Let's welcome the man of God. Would you do it? Let's praise him tonight. Sometimes you uh, walk to a pulpit and you have a little, a little hesitancy because of uh, various reasons that other times you just know that you know that you know. And tonight's just kind of one of those you know kind of services. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, uh, this is a great meeting. It really is. This is a great meeting. It's a Christian meeting. And uh, brother and sister Dylan's heart and uh, desire to help. And uh, all these home missionaries, missionaries that are here. Uh, how can God not bless? I mean, he, he yes, can't God. overlook yes, this. Lord. He just can't bypass it because it's his spirit to give. Yes. And I give honor. I, I really do love and appreciate Brother and Sister Dylan. They've been very kind. They've always been so kind to my family and I. John Mark, I think, is helping the children's church tonight. And it, I, uh, Lord's blessed, and I attend a lot of these type meetings, but he always wants to come to Madison. And he, he loves Brother and Sister Dylan. And uh, we're honored to be here, honored to be with my friends. I have several friends here. At least I think they're my friends. Yeah. Amen. And uh, I know they are. I'm, I'm right at home here with some of these men that I've known for a long time. And uh, we give honor to all the ministry that's in the house tonight. We give honor to the saints of the Most High God. Yes, the God. Lord's going to talk to us tonight. Yes, Jesus. Now look, this, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'd rather preach during the day. Because the hungry folks come during the day. <laughs> Make it plain. Come on. Yes, sir. Uh, so anyway, uh, <clears throat> I hope everybody gets involved here tonight. Amen. From the book of Romans, the twelfth chapter, Romans chapter twelve, and uh, I actually want to begin at verse number seventeen. I told him verse nineteen, but I want to go to verse number seventeen. I'm gonna tell you, brother, brother Mitchell. Thank you for preaching to me last night. Yes. Lord have mercy. Yes, God. I'll never be the same. I promise you that. Never be the same. And then today, well, you just have to have been here. If you wasn't here, there's no words to explain it to you. These guys preach themselves out of their minds. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 17, recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. And here's the pastor part coming out in him. 
if it be possible, <laughs> as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. There's some of them that really try you on that verse, you know it? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place under wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Amen. I'm going to stop there. Amen. A few years ago, I'll tell you a little bit about it here in just a second. The Lord dealt with me about this verse of Scripture. And uh, it has to be right. That's the only thing I can tell you. This has to be right to preach this sermon. And uh, <clears throat> last uh, week or so, the Lord really began to deal with me about it. And then uh, he's confirmed it two or three times this week, so I have no doubt. I want to talk to you tonight about when the avenger arrives. When the avenger arrives. Amen. I hope some of you know how close you are to your miracle. Amen. I really do. I hope you know. Now, here's the deal. Matt Maddox is supposed to be preaching tonight. If Mark Morgan jumps on this pulpit, we will have miracles tonight. <laughs> I may push it over. And I don't plan on starting fast. Matter of fact, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going I'm to do what I do. And, and it's going to start just a tad slow. And then it's going to bog down. And then it's going to blow up. Mark it down. Slow, bog down, blow up. So don't get nervous when it bogs down. The Holy Ghost is going to do some remarkable things in this place tonight. If you believe that, somebody shout unto the Lord. Let's give him a praise in this house tonight. Praise God. I love you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I think we can do better than that. I really do. I think we can do better than that. We're going to lift the roof off this place tonight before it's over. We're going to shout until we get sweaty. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. God bless you. Praise God. I'm going to tell you, you folks in Mississippi should never have to go to hell. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I called my wife before church this afternoon. I, she said, is it hot there? I said, well, it is to me. She said, I just checked, and she said, it's 68 degrees outside. Somebody's got to live there and do the work of God. Of course, we have a few other things we have to put up with. <laughs> Amen. You'll catch on here in just a second. Amen. You know, I don't know why. Well, I do. I, I understand why. It's a hard lesson sometimes becoming a Christian. Well, I shocked some of you right there. I, I, I really do. I, I struggle with some of this Christianity stuff. And I don't struggle with the shouting and dancing and talking in tongues and magnifying God and church stuff. But this Christianity stuff. Man. It's, it's so different than my nature. Brother Shatwell can tell you that. I was preaching for him, I was preaching for him one time, and uh, this old boy got mad at me after church. He come up, he's going to whip me after church. In the altar, I mean, I was coming off the steps, and he was waiting on me. He drew back to hit me, and he said, uh, <laughs> he said, I want you to learn how to feed the sheep. And I said, excuse me? He said, 
you're preaching. You need to learn how to feed the sheep. I looked this way and I looked that way and I said, I don't see any sheep up here complaining about what they had to eat tonight. I said, now I got an old goat up here that's mad. Now you know why he wanted to hit me. And he said, He drew back to hit me and said, now, don't do that. He said, why? I said, because I've never been tested in that area. And I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. You may hit me. I may turn the other cheek. And then again. That's what I'm talking about. You know, I get mad in traffic. I don't like following idiot drivers. I just have a lot of problems with some of these verses. I preached here last year, a year or two ago, about love of God stuff. And I told you I had trouble with some of these verses. And these are a few other verses I have trouble with. Because when Paul says, I don't want you to render evil for evil. In other words, if somebody does you wrong, you don't try to pay them back. You know, we got this old proverbial statement, we don't get mad, we get even. I don't, I don't believe that. There's nothing in your nature that wants to just get even. You want to get just a little ahead. Mm. <laughs> now, all you glorified folks <laughs> that just wake up in the morning talking in tongues, loving everybody. I, I, uh, I've told this story, I may have told it here before. You know, when he gets into this, don't render evil for evil. You know, most disputes just start over small stuff, crazy stuff. I had a couple one time I was trying to pastor. <laughs> and uh, she called me one evening late, said my husband's in jail. So what's he in jail for? We got in a fight. Got a little physical, so I had him arrested. So he gets out of jail. We're meeting early the next morning in the office. And I said, okay, would y'all like to tell me what this is all about? And uh, they just kept heads bowed. They wouldn't want to say anything. And finally, I just kept pressing. If I'm going to help you, you got to tell me what it's about. Finally, one of them said, chicken. I said, what? He said, chicken. I said, Chicken, chicken, squawking chickens, chicken. You got in a fight over chicken? How do you get in a fight over chicken? She said, well, pastor, I cooked five pieces. <laughs> he ate two, and I ate two, and there was one left. I said, you got to be kidding me. Of course, in my brain, I got a real weird sense of humor in my brain. I'm thinking, man, I hope it wasn't over a wing. <laughs> but you'd be surprised. What happens, and this is what Paul was saying. He said, when these things happen, you don't reward them back with evil. Let me tell you a little story where God gave me this message. Uh, when I was passing the state of Oklahoma, I had several young preachers that were there. And um, we, we set up a little tithing deal. And out of the tithing deal, uh, a percentage of it I had put over to the side. It was what I called my vacation fund. And so I, I let it set for about 18 months. And I decided it's time to go on vacation. So I went down, got the tickets, and booked the whole vacation. And... Uh, and put it on a credit card. And then I went to the church secretary and I said, uh, I need you to bring me a, a check from that vacation fund. I said, do you know how much is in there right offhand? She said, uh, no, no, I don't. She got to act real squirrely on me. And finally she said, I, th I think there's about $89 in there. I said, 
No, I'm not talking about the general fund. I'm talking about the, 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 the vacation fund, slush fund. And uh, she said, uh, oh, I, 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 I just have to check. Well, the next morning when I got back to the church office, in front of my desk or in front of my office door was this box and it had the church books in it. And there was a letter in there that said, I cannot work for somebody who's going to accuse me. And I'm thinking, what did I accuse her of? Good. So I got her and her husband to the office later on that evening. We got to talking. And I, I was, I got a real, I tell you what, I have a good gift that works. It's called the gift of suspicion. <laughs> and it was working. So we get in the office and I said, now listen, I don't know. I, I was assuming there's more money in this account. And they get a little defensive. And finally, I just, I, I just said, all right, did you take any money out of here? I mean, you've already said I'm accusing you. Might as well do it now. And she breaks down and starts crying. I didn't mean to take it. I just didn't mean to take it. I said, so you took some? Yes. We just got behind and this and this. And I said, well, how much did you take? She said, I, I don't know. Five, six thousand dollars. Now, I know in Mississippi, y'all carry that around your front pocket. <laughs> but trust me, in the second poorest county in the state of Oklahoma, that's a lot of money. And uh, Brother Shatwell pastors in the first poorest county in the state of Oklahoma. <laughs> Amen. I believe it. And so, I, I didn't mean to get you fired up over there. Calm down now. Calm down. I believe that. And so, cool down, Will. And so I, uh, I was trying to figure out how I was going to go home and tell my family our vacation got cut down from two weeks to 20 minutes. <clears throat> and so I got home, and here's the problem. It wasn't just the money. It was people leaving, church problems. It just escalated to a real crisis. And so when I got home, I told my wife, she said, Mark, I just, I'm just tired of all this stuff, you know. I just, how long do we? And I could tell, I really, I'm really going to have to get a hold of God. So I went down to the church. So on Saturday night, <clears throat> Later in the week, I went down to church, and I was praying. It's on the second steps. When in prayer, the Lord directed me to Romans chapter 12. So I went and got my Bible. I turned there, and he said, I'm fixed to show you something here. I want this to become a part of your life. And these verses that I read to you is what he gave me. But when I come down to that statement where he says, but rather make place or make room for wrath, for vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. When I got there, I felt the quickening of the Holy Ghost. So I went in my office and I looked those verses up. And what it meant is, is in every person that you talked about today, that vacuum, there's a space and a spot in there that once evil has been done, the tendency of humanity is to allow self-vindication or bitterness or anger to feel this place because somebody has done you an injustice and human nature is I'm not going to let you get by with this Whew. boy and so he said but the problem is it's when I arrive to avenge you if that space is not open and clean, there's nothing I can do. So your job from this night forward is to make sure the rest of your life that nothing fills that space. Nothing. Until I arrive. <laughs> so... I went back to the altar, sat back down the steps, 
And at that place, the Lord said, if you keep your spirit right, and you'll not get in the pulpit and discuss this and tell the church and vindicate yourself, I will repay you. Not only will I repay you the money, but for every person that's left, I'm going to, re I'm going to replace them. I'm going to replace them with somebody that's going to worship me more fervent. I'm going to replace them with somebody that's going to be in the prayer room. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Hallelujah. Now, now y'all still with me here? Okay, now, here's, here's what happened. Then he directs me over to the book of Job. And I get over in the book of Job, and I'm telling you, was I ever about to get on a trip? Because in the book of Job, it all starts. And here's where it starts. It starts this conversation between Satan and God. And Satan comes to God, and God says, well, where you been? Going to and fro, seeking whom I can devour. I want to, you know, mess the whole world up. And God says, have you considered my servant Job? I'm telling you, with a God like that, you don't need any enemies. <laughs> and he said, I can't get to Job. He says, does Job serve you for naught? You know what that means? Does Job serve you for nothing? Now, let me tell you something about you. God, if you took all your blessings from these people, they wouldn't serve you. See, the attack was not against Job. The attack was against God. You think these people serve you just to serve you? Let me tell you something. If you took away his wealth, his health, or his family, I promise you, he'll curse you to your face. I hate to tell you this is going to sound negative, but I promise you this. You will not get out of life without being tested in one of those three areas, if not all three. Because somewhere, the same conversation is going to be had about you between God and the devil. Have you considered my servant Mark? Have you considered my servant Mike? Have you, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Have you considered these servants? If you took all this away from them, they wouldn't serve you. And God says, let's find out. And brother, you might as well get ready for it. It's coming. He's going to attack your health or your wealth or your family. There's nothing you can do about it. You just might as well weather the storm and come out like Job. The Lord giveth and he taketh away. But blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, now, now sit down, sit down, sit down. it's not time to blow up yet. Now here's the deal. Now it starts. He attacks all three areas. Then after he attacks, here comes Job's friends. And here's how the book of Job unfolds. Two or three chapters, one of his friends accuses Job. Job, this kind of stuff just doesn't happen. Come on, Job, confess it. You've been smoking pot. No, I haven't. Come on, Job, confess it. You've been drinking. No, I haven't. Come on, Job, you've been committing adultery. No, I haven't. And so what happens is for two or three chapters, one of his friends accuses him. And then after that, for two or three chapters, Job defends himself. And then the other friend starts, and then Job defends himself. And this is how several chapters go. Until finally there's a man that gets into the conversation by the name of Elihu. Commentaries don't even know if Elihu was a real man. Some say he was a theophany. Uh -huh. yeah. He gets into the picture. The first thing he says is to the three friends, I thought I could find some wisdom here, but I have it. And then he turns to Job and he sucker punches Job. He said, Job, God's mad at you. And let me tell you why he's mad at you. Because you have regarded your righteousness more than the righteousness of God. Ah, you didn't catch that. See, Job, your problem is you thought this was about you. But it's not about you. It's about God. And it's about his righteousness. Fasten your seatbelt. And when Elihu gets through talking, Job thought it was over, but it wasn't. 
God showed up. And God said to Job, stand up, put your britches on like a man. I want to ask you some questions. You're worried about your reputation? Where were you when I plumb bobbed the world? Where were you when I took my finger and carved out rivers and streams? Where were you when I tweaked mountain peaks? And I, oh, by the way, Job, can you cause an eagle to fly? Oh, and another thing, Job, can you say to the seas, this is as far as you can go, you can't come any farther? Job, can you do any of those things? And by the time God got through with Job, this is what Job said up to this point. Only my ear hath heard of thee. But now that mine eye has seen thee, I abhor myself and I repent in dust and ashes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here it is. See, we make it about us. And that's the problem. When all this stuff was going on, here's this lady, she's embezzled money. I got people leaving. I'd go to camps and conferences. How you doing, Brother Morgan? I'm doing good. Man, Brother Morgan, last Sunday night, we had 695 folks pray through the Holy Ghost. That seemed like what they were saying. How's it going there? Now here's my problem. Here's my problem. I thought it was my reputation at stake. I thought it was my righteousness at stake. I made it about me. Well... Man, we, we, we having to move. <laughs> they moving to everybody else's church. Everybody around me's having revival. <laughs> yeah, they, run, they were running the aisles Sunday night. It's one way, but they were running the aisles. Run right out the back door. I ain't going to see them again. Tuck their tithing envelopes with them. I mean, the finances went crashing. People went to leaving. And I was worried about me. Man, God, what's everybody going to think? And this is where it starts. Mm -hmm. Must must be something wrong with you. (laughs) Must be a real dysfunctional pastor. (laughs) I am. (laughs) Yeah. What's wrong with you? Wow. You know. Here's what happened. I'd feel that space. I'd feel things rush in there to fill it. God, that woman stole from me. People go to prison for stuff like that. Then she goes around the church telling everybody a bunch of lies and stuff. And it, uh, you got to be kidding you wait till she walks in next Sunday night. Brother, you, thou art the woman. <laughs> you wicked, evil servant. <laughs> you go into prison. And every time I get ready to say that, the Holy Ghost says, go on, stupid. Go on. Vindicate yourself. Oh, trust me, I'm going to find where some of you live here in just a second. And so, Brother Carney, I cannot tell you how many nights I had to go down to the church and wrestle with it. And I cannot tell you how many other times beyond that I've had to go back to the cross and realize it's not about me. God have mercy. I got to hurry. So, time went on, a few months passed. All of a sudden, people start praying through. And uh, had this evangelist preach for us. I mentioned his name today, old brother Bourne. 
He's walking down there in this little unique manner, and he comes to one of the men of the church, and he stops and says, you, uh, you do what the Holy Ghost asks you to do tonight. And he asked that guy four times. Finally, the guy said, I- I'll do it. Just tell me what it is, and I'll do it. And he said, okay, after church, I want you to go up there and get your pastor's payment book on his car. And from this day forward, he's not to make another payment on that car. I was like, oh, my God. It wasn't the miracles who he was asking. And the guy said, yeah, I'll do it. Our church came up, told my wife, bring payment book. This is on Saturday night. Sunday morning, I took Brother Moore to the airport, got back to church, and him and the rest of his little buddies were out in the foyer where they normally stayed. <laughs> All service. And <laughs> I called it my hypocrite huddle. <laughs> and then, I mean, that's, that was our ministry, so just leave them out there, you know. <laughs> and so I, <laughs> I come walking through there, and they say, hey, we want to talk to you. So we go in the office. And they said, look, we've been out here talking, and we decided we don't want to do what he asked us to do last night. And all of a sudden, uh-huh. the rush. Mm-hmm. I, well, I, I didn't act. And the Holy Ghost said, keep your mouth shut. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the main man said, I've decided that if I'm going to have to make payments on something, it's not going to be used. Now I'm from Missouri, it takes me a while to catch on. And I say, excuse me? He says, it's not going to be used. I said, what are you talking about? He said, I'm not making payments on a used car. He said, go on down this week, pick out whatever you want, just have the paperwork ready, I'll come by and sign it. I said, you're joking. <laughs> no, I'm not joking, go down. I said, anything? He said, anything you want, go get it. Did it not happen? Anything you want, go pick it out. I said, anything? Mercedes, Anything? I said, well, I have been looking at full conversion vans. He said, whatever you want to go get, go get it. I said, okay, I think I will. So they left the office. I come out back behind where no one could see me and come across back behind the Baptist to the fellowship hall. My wife's other helping some of the Sunday school kids. And then when I was coming across the hallway to tell her what just happened, this is what the Holy Ghost said. I told you months ago, if you'd keep your spirit right, I would not only vindicate you, but I would repay. I said, yeah, Lord, you did. He said, I just swapped you $6,000 for 30. I said, excuse me? He said, that $6,000 was a test. It was a test to see if I could really give you what I wanted to give you. He said, but since you kept your heart right, now I'm going to repay Hallelujah. I bought it and drove it. Drove the wheels off of it. But here's what happened. The night at the altar that God spoke this message to me, when, when the, he got through speaking it to me, I don't have this happen a lot, but on occasion, all of a sudden the building went totally blank. And instead of a center aisle, it was an old dusty dirt path. And standing back where the doors would have been in the sanctuary, there stood an older man and he had a knapsack over his shoulder. And in the vision, I said, Lord, who is that? He said, he is the avenger. And I said, what's in that sack? He said, everything hell's took from you and more. He said, but when he arrives, make sure your heart's right, that you can receive him. Because if your heart's not right, you're going to miss him. It has been a, a long journey. It's been a long journey. Here it is. Here it is. You see, we take everything so personal. We take it personal. It's about us, it's about me, it's about my reputation. You know what's so funny? Jesus went about trying to get rid of his. He he went around trying to get rid of his reputation and we will do everything in the world to keep ours. But the fact is, is at some point in time, 
Somebody's going to do you evil. Somebody's going to lie. Somebody's going to criticize you. Somebody's going to, I mean, just twist stuff up. It's going to happen. But here's what God's been giving me. How do you know it's wrong for them to lie against you? Well, God, how does humanity even know it's wrong to lie? Because your word says it is. Oh, so if they lie, it's not in violation against you. They violated my word. So see, son, it's not about you. It's about my word. Somebody committed adultery with someone. How do you know that adultery is wrong? Come on. Stealing. How do you know all this stuff? But see, here's the problem. Here's the problem. We make them our enemies. It's, it's, it's a consistent problem. It's all the way through the scripture. It starts all the way back from blood crying to blood under the altars. How long until you avenge us of our adversaries? How long? How long? Until you avenge us of our adversaries. Here's the case. You want to see it? Here's the unjust judge. Here's the widow. Avenge me of mine adversary. See, she makes it her adversary. Avenge me of mine adversary. That may be a key as to why it went so long. Because until it ceases being your adversary. And it becomes God's adversary then you, my friend, are sitting in the seat of judgment. And God says, as long as you fill that room and you sit in that seat, I can't do anything. But if they'll quit being your enemy and you understand who they really are enemies of, they are enemies of the word. They are enemies of the cross. I'm, and brother, I'm going to tell you, Bishop, it starts. You know what? Let me finish that. Next verse. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Because God knows about, enough about human nature to know this. You can be in that asking position and place of denial so long that when the avenger finally arrives, you don't even have faith for the miracle. It's hard for some people to transition from asking to receiving. Because avenge me, avenge me, avenge me. And God's like, avenge me of this sickness. Avenge me. You've got to do it. I want to be healed. Ho, 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 ho. It's not your word that says you're going to be healed. It's his word that declares he's the great physician and he the, he's the God that heals. You don't have anything to do with it. So if he doesn't do it, it's against his word, not yours. You ain't got nothing to worry about. And when you finally understand, you don't have to avenge me, but you will avenge your word. I'm not coming about my reputation whether you do or you don't doesn't have anything to do with me. But I am coming claiming your word. Still here? It's not about you. But you don't know what they did. You, you don't know the injustice. You don't know the pain. You don't know the hurt. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. The last thing that Jesus Christ had to do prior to a new level. The last thing he had to do is when he's hanging on the cross, he's... His brothers have betrayed him. The religious system has mocked him. 
And now he says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he's in a moment of loneliness. He feels like God's forsaken him. His brothers have betrayed him. His organization has turned on him. And the last thing he has to do, Brother Shatwell, in all of that, you talk, see, some of you are waiting on some ooey, gooey, mystical something before you forgive. Forgiveness doesn't have anything to do with the feeling. It has everything to do, it starts with the choice. If it's going on feeling, he didn't feel like forgiving. But the last thing he says is, is Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And if he hadn't have forgiven, then the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea would have become his prison. He would have never been resurrected. He would have stayed in the grave. But because he chose, this ain't about me. It's not about my room. It's about him. It's about his word. It's about him saying, I'm not going to leave your soul in hell. It's about on the third day because I have chosen. I want you to listen to me. Listen, the devil's shrewd. He's shrewd. He knows. He ain't going to come in here and entice some of you with smoking dope and drinking and fornicating. A few weeks ago early, one morning, the Holy Ghost woke me up and said, I want to tell you what the greatest hindrance to prayer and revival in America is. And I said, ah, oh, this is it. So what is it, God? He said, offenses. Offenses. People get offended. Somebody did you wrong. Somebody didn't keep their end of a deal. Somebody borrowed 20 bucks from you didn't pay you back. You'd be shocked at how childish some of our Pentecostals really are. Somebody sat in your seat. Somebody sang the solo that you thought your little Susie should have got. Hello? The pastor told your kid to quit fornicating. Or he couldn't go on the youth trip. And you started through the church telling everybody how unfair he was and how he's picking on your little darling. And brother, you got offended. And you sat there at church because you made it all about you. It's all about me. I've been wrong. My family's been wronged. Some of you been carrying that for generations. Some of you got preacher's blood in your mouth because your daddy wouldn't forgive and your grandpa wouldn't forgive. And then you wonder why your prayers aren't answered. I feel like setting the plow down now. You come to church and all you can do is criticize and make fun of everybody else that's getting their prayers answered because it's all become about you. Your little petty feelings, your little elementary injustices. Somewhere along the line, you need to grow up and realize it ain't about me, it's about the word of God. And if they were wrong, it's not a violation against me. They violated the word of God. You'll deal with preachers that act like three-year-olds sometimes because, well, brother, brother Carney, brother so-and-so, they took one of my saints Big deal. Go get you some more. <laughs> well, that went over real well. Well, he proselyted them. That's between him and God now. What's you going to do, tear your church up? Boy, I'm sorry, man, but this is on me. What are you going to do, tear your whole church up? Get up in the pulpit and call the church down the street's name. Tell everybody how low down he is. He's a compromising, charismatic. Is that what you're going to do? You're going to mess the whole church up and inject a spirit of bitterness in them? Now everything's focused on the church down the street. No wonder everybody wants to go down there. You keep pointing at it. Why don't you just say, you know what, God, if he tuck him and it's wrong, that's between you and him. You'll take care of it. 
there's only six billion people in the world. That means you might have to go get a Bible study chart and go get somebody else. Oh, I see that's the problem. No wonder they want to leave. If I had a steady diet of all your bitterness, I'm sorry, you're going to have to fire this and take the tape out. No wonder they want to go. If all they hear is problems, 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 UPC's going down the drain. Problems, problems, problems. Everybody's compromising. Everybody's going liberal. Everybody... If that's all I heard, you know what? Who cares? <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it, but who cares? God didn't call me to pastor the UPC. We got some to think God did, but he didn't. As long as you know you're right in your church between you and God, that's all that really matters. I could, now this is going this to be wrong. I don't care what the UPC votes in or votes out. It's not going to affect my local church. That'll really go over real well and get me crucified. I'm going to go back and preach revival. I'm going to go back and preach separation. I'm going to go back and preach the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter what the rest of you preach. And if you want to go crazy, that's between you and God. God didn't set me up to be your judge. Do you hear me? I got enough trouble keeping me saved. I got enough trouble keeping my family saved. I got enough trouble trying to reach 6.7 million people. My God, you know more about what's going on at the next church than you do about you. I'm so far off my sermon. Well, that girl wasn't, so they must be compromising. Really? Then is God compromising? Because the Bible says of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. The government of God and the kingdom of God is an ever-growing, ever-increasing thing. And if you're not growing, are you in the kingdom? You really want to get down to it? If you're not growing, are you in the kingdom? And I'm not talking about numerically even. You know what? You better. Well, Brother Morgan, you just, you just don't know. You don't, you don't know what they said about me. Listen, I have people that do nothing but make it their life calling to get a hold of me on the phone and say, did you hear what so-and-so said about you? No, and please don't tell me. That's just something else I have to pray through over. <laughs> My salvation is not because I'm so spiritual. It's just gifts that God has given me and people, people, people. Jesus, I've got some people in my life that just about the time I'm getting ready to really do something stupid, they'll call. Now, what do you think you're doing? I was getting ready to go help this preacher fight the whole district. I mean, I was mad. They had done him wrong, and they did. They did. They'd done him wrong. And I was ready to go down there. I told the church this is an attack against apostolic ministry. The next morning, I was, I'd already booked my flight. I'm going down to help this man. And old Sister Chanel calls me. As soon as I heard a voice, I said, oh my God, I've messed up now. <laughs> this is how she starts the conversation. It's not your fight, stay out of it. She said, let me ask you a question, young man. Has God ever showed you a wheat field? Yeah, he has. 
and I want to ask you something. And she told me a story about years ago, her pastor and all them, and how her pastor got to fighting people, fighting organizations, and just fighting stuff. And he ended up in this vision she said they had years ago. The angel of the Lord come to him in the sweet field, called him out from the house, and asked her pastor, choose. And he beckons toward this massive wheat field and says, you can have that or you can have this. And he points. And leaning up against that little house was three small bundles of wheat. And he keeps looking at the wheat field and the, and the sheaves, and he says, I'll take those. And she says, Brother Morgan, he died a bitter old man, pastor in three small struggling churches. And she said, and the Holy Ghost asked me today, told me to ask you, which one do you want? Because you cannot hold a sickle and a sword at the same time. But listen to me now. Well, here's the problem. See, you want to lay your sickle down because you, see, you're like the psalmist David. My foot well nigh slipped. When I seen the prospect, I don't mean wealth. That means it looked like evil and wickedness was getting by. He said, my foot well and I slipped until I went into the house of the Lord and I seen the end thereof. You know what he's seen? He's seen the word of God standing. And the word of God says, evil never gets by. Whew. See? The, is this okay, elder? Here's the deal. One of the great characteristics of the kingdom of God is this. At some point, it has to look like it's losing. Because the principle of the kingdom is not the kingdom over, lording over. It's always coming under. The kingdoms of this world lord over. Jesus taught that to his disciples. He said, they that lord over you, are they not benefactors? But not so among you. See, somewhere this little kingdom of the world part gets a hold of you and it totally violates the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God says this all comes to the king. But in the kingdom of the world, you have to take power and you have to get a sword and you have to deal with it. Law. But the kingdom of God says... I know that it looks like on Friday we losing. But it ain't over. I know it really looks bad right now. I know it looks like evil's getting by. I know it looks like the wrong is never going to be dealt with. But trust me, like somebody said, Friday's here, but Sunday's coming. Now, I don't know how far to get into stuff because I could really, you know, we was getting ready to do this Azusa deal and in the prayer meeting prior to the service, Sister Gwen Porsche heads up our prayer deal for America on Fire. She come over to me in the prayer meeting. She said, Brother Morgan, the Lord wants me to talk to you right now. I feel like I got to tell you something. I said, what? She said, the Lord said, because you've not risen up and grabbed a sword and tried to fight your own battles that as of this moment, God will arise in your life as a man of war. And she said, when people say things against you, it will not be against you. It will be against the word of God and the purpose of God. Brother Shatwell, a few weeks ago, prayer in an injustice I come to the brink of something. I come to the brink where the Holy Ghost said, he said, anything you say in this prayer meeting, I'll do. And I looked at the wrong and the injustice. And for a brief moment, I wanted to pronounce judgment on it. I mean, I started to open my mouth and say it. And then I went back to the cross. And I said, God... Before I say this, out of all the mistakes I've made, is this the right thing to do? He said, how many times did I rain my judgment down on you when you were wrong? I said, okay, God. 
it involved the church. That little homish church, they were struggling. It was a deep injustice. It was wrong. It was so blatant. It was so open. And I could sense in their spirit, come on, Brother Morgan, do something. Come on. You tell stories about the judgments of God fallen. Do something. Do something now. This past Monday, it come to a head. And a young man sat in the car. And I was ready. The sword was coming out. And I said, it's wrong. But I felt the gentle hand of God say, I've brought you through too much to get you to this point. This is a test. Yes. See, son, there's two things I'm going to watch in your life. Yeah. Your actions and your reactions. And most folks only focus on actions. But I'm more concerned about your reactions right now. Because before I can really trust you with what I want to give you with, I want to see if I can really do that, trust you with it. Or are you going to use it for the wrong reason? I said, okay, God. It's not about me. I looked at that young man. He was older. He's so broken. He'd been so hurt. I said, it's not about me. It's not about you. You hear me? He said, Brother Morgan. I said, it's not about me. It's not about you. The violation is not against us. This is out of our jurisdiction. It belongs to God. I said, because the greatest gift that you can give is the gift of forgiveness. Because what makes you more like Christ is when you have the power to retain or the power to forgive. It's in your ability did you hear me I'm talking to some of you right now I'm telling you why it hasn't happened yet I'm telling you why you're still struggling I'm telling you why you're frustrated I wept most of the way home because I come to that brink and when I finally got back to the house and in a moment of real honesty I said God I hate to tell you this but most of my life, it looks like wrongs got by. And I'm just going to tell you, God, I'm mad at you. I don't like you right now, God. I don't like you. He said, you know what? You only preach forgiveness in one dimension. You only preach that you have to forgive each other. But you'll be shocked at how many people that look at broken promises they feel. Injustices and things I've promised but I've not done, they thought. And now it's grown in them. They're even bitter toward me. And they feel that I'm unjust. And he said, until my people even forgive me. You see, most of us are hanging on the cross here tonight. And we feel that God has forsaken us. Yeah, you do. You feel like God has forsaken you. Brother God, when I don't know what I did, uh, I wrote some stuff down this morning. And I don't even know what I did with it. It probably doesn't matter. At some point, some time, you just have to give it to God. You just have to say, it's, it's not about me, my reputation. It's about you and your reputation. It's about your word. If you don't do what you told me, there must be a reason for it. And I'll not blame you foolishly. I'm not going to accuse you, God. I release you because your ways are so far above mine that I can't comprehend. And there's got to be a reason. There's got to be a reason. God, just, God, here it is. And it really doesn't matter what they say and it doesn't matter what lies they tell and it doesn't matter how deep it hurts and it doesn't matter how far the sword went in and the knife in your back. It really doesn't matter, God. Because the bottom line is to be able to stand like the Apostle Paul and say at the close of my life, but I have kept the faith not just doctrinal faith, but I kept faith in God and I kept faith in his people and I kept faith in his plan. My God, that's what it's really all about. It's about God and his word and something that's way beyond you. It's about eternal matters that your little brain can't even comprehend. And if it appears
appears that God has withheld. There must be a just reason somewhere. But I've come tonight to tell you that the story is not over. It's not over, my friend. Come on, don't lose now. I said, don't lose now. Some of you are hanging on your cross and you're drawing your last breath and you don't understand why there's so much betrayal and why you feel forsaken by God. But the best thing I can tell you tonight is just say, Father, forgive, for they know not what they do. I even forgive you. The sun's about to go dark. Death is upon me. But I forgive all that I need to forgive because I refuse to allow that tomb to become my prison. On the third day, the avenger's coming. This thing's not over. Something's about to happen. Something's about to explode. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. For it? The miracle was right there, and something happened. The financial breakthrough, you could see it. Something happened. And it looks like the devil keeps winning, keeps taking, until finally you say, What's this all about, God? Well, it's not about you. It's about my word. Oh, God. Woo! See, some of you, you can't say like Joseph said to his brother when they said his daddy's dead, we're, we're in trouble. And Joseph looked at his brother, and this is what he said. He said, am I in the place of God? It ain't my business to judge you. What you did wasn't against me. It was against the plan and the purpose and the word of God. I'm not judge. I'm not God. It's between you and him now. Y'all still with me now? Whew. Some of you need to forgive. Some of you need to forgive. Because you've made it all about you. But you know what I hear? coming back in that car the other day I turned to that young man and I said it's a test he said what do you mean I said it's a test I said I hear him close by somewhere I said I've seen him in the spirit I said he's got a knapsack and in that sack is everything that the enemy has took from you and more and I said if you can listen Beyond your hurt and beyond the injustice, you'll hear his footsteps saying, I'm coming now. <laughs> Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. He's coming to your city right now. He's coming to your church right now. He's coming to your family right now. Oh, some of you don't believe that. Some of you don't believe that. Oh, Brother Morgan, I've heard that and heard it and heard it and heard it. You know, I, I, I'm really trying to close. But you know, I, here's the thing. Listen to me. Here's the thing. You watch the life of John. There's three dimensions to John's life. John, the son of thunder. John, the beloved. John, the revelator. And all three of those different titles to John, they're in parallel with revelations that John had received about Jesus Christ. Whew. My God. First revelation that John sees of Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh. It became flesh. 
John was there when he seen him crucified. The word made flesh, clothed in humility, suffering Messiah. But the next time John sees him, he's on the Isle of Patmos. And John said, I was in the spirit of the Lord's day. And I heard a voice behind me. And I turned to see who it was that spake. And when I turned, standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, was one like unto the Son of Man. I really wasn't sure because this time he wasn't clothed with the garment of a suffering Messiah. This time he was clothed with the garment of a high priest. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! So John's revelation in parallel of his life is in this fact. John seen him clothed in humility. Now he sees him clothed with that of a faithful high priest making intercession for the church, standing faithfully. But you've got to remember, the revelation is about the word. Don't let any Trinitarian ever fool you when they use that verse of scripture that I will go back and share with the glory of my Father that I had from the beginning because there's only three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. All that Jesus was saying is, is I'm going back to what I was. I'm going back to being the Word of God. That's what it's really all about. And John sees the word clothed in humility and clothed in flesh. But now he sees him clothed as a faithful high priest. Feet as though they burn in a fire. Eyes as a flame. He sees him. But that's not the last thing that John sees because in the book of Revelation, John's about to get another, another little insight in the 19th chapter. This time he's not the suffering Messiah clothed in humility. This time he's not the faithful high priest. But now John sees him coming and he has a vesture dipped in blood. He is a judge. He's come to make war in righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. And John said this time, he's got a garment dipped in blood, a vesture dipped in blood, and he has a name written which is called the Word of God, and he's coming to make war. And when it's all said and done, this is his proclamation. He is King of Kings, and he is Lord of Lords. My God. That vesture dipped in blood is not the blood of the slain lamb to fulfill his own word. But rather every time a general king was about to go into battle, he would slip on a garment. And on that garment was the blood of every slain foe that he had ever stood against or somebody that stood defiant against him. And when the word of God put on that vesture dipped in blood, it had the blood of everything that had ever stood defiant against the word of God. It had every kingdom. It had every dictator. It had every president. Anything that had ever stood defined against the word of God. Now the word's coming to make war against the Antichrist and his system. And he's declaring to it now. Nothing's ever won and nothing ever will. Because the word of God always, 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 ultimately triumphs. Here's what I feel to tell you. I can't find God. Of course you can't. Nobody likes to change his clothes in public. And Brother Carney, this apostolic church has looked for years like we're losing. And we want to make it about us and our little reputations. It's not about us now. And you know what's fixing to happen? He's changing his coat. And he's not coming as a suffering Messiah. And he's not coming as a faithful high priest. He's coming to make war. And you know he's going to make war with? Everything that has been standing defiant against his word. Listen, listen, listen. Including you if you are. I'm going to tell you in the Holy Ghost tonight, God's getting ready to vindicate his word. Because some of you are going to wake up tonight and realize what it's about. And you're going to release God to be God. <laughs> and the avenger is coming. We close with this verse of scripture, I promise. You ready for it? How's he going to do it? <laughs> I was planning on preaching this this afternoon. Things kind of got messed up. 
So I thought I was all ready and prepared. I was like, okay. Brother God asked me what I can do to help you for tonight. I'm ready. A little for church, Holy Ghost said, no, you're not quite ready. Come here, I'll show you something. Come here. I said, okay, Lord. Here it is, Brother Mitchell. The Avenger is getting close. And when the Avenger gets close, just get ready. All hell's going to break loose. Because the spirit world picks up on it. He's coming. We got to get him distracted. And everything starts going crazy. If God promised you wealth, yours goes crazy. <laughs> some of you can't relate to that, but some of you can. It, whatever he's promised, it all just starts, and you start getting disillusioned. So, God, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Brother God, can you help me read something? I want you to turn to the book of Psalms, the 149th chapter, the sixth verse. Now, hang on just a second. Listen, you don't think that God can get mad? Does anybody here think God can get mad? Listen to this. If I whet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will take mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh and that which the blood of the slain and of the captives and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. That's what happens when God says, that's enough. I'll go tell this story. My God, I feel you now. Brother, uh, Brother uh, Suber, you was in Bossier City, all that witchcraft junk was going on. I was preaching for you. My wife was at home, had light switches flipping on and off. Stuff, black crows and birds landing on motel rooms. And when I got back, found out the three, three leading, does it not happen? Three leading medicine men joined together. We're going to curse that preacher. And he's going to die with a heart attack. And so I got back and I was down to preach for him. And anytime you get around him, all kinds of weird stuff's going to start happening. And, <laughs> and, and Brother Carney, time I got back home, they tell me all this stuff. Man, I started having chest pains. I mean, Brother, Brother Wright, my arm went to tingling. I was like, oh, my God. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm fixing to die, man. I'm going I'm to have a heart attack. I mean, it's, this is bad. And it just kept on. Well, we were getting ready to have a conference in that area the following week. And I had Sam Emery come preach for me. Now, Sam didn't know any of this stuff was going on. But when he gets there Sunday night, he's pretty, he stopped. He said, the Lord told me to tell you that enough is enough. And when they go to picking on my preachers, I'm about to get mad. And he said, whatever they sent to do to you, God said it's going to happen to them. Now listen, when he said that, I made up my mind. Now I may die of a heart attack, but it ain't going to be because of some medicine. It's going to be because of cholesterol, not eating right, not exercising. But it ain't going to do anything with this witchcraft stuff. You hear me? That was on Sunday night. Did it happen? Wednesday night, I come into the conference. One of the ladies in my church walked over and said, I think you want to read this. That morning, one of the head leading medicine men in that state, perfect health, I mean, 40-something years old, falls over dead with a massive heart attack. Oh, that's just a coincidence. God said, I got news for you. This is what I'm going to do for my people. When you go to picking on my people, You've touched the pupil of my eye. And I got news for you, devil. You just keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on. You're going to realize it ain't about them, it's about me and you. And when I arise, not their enemies, but when I arise, my enemies, they scatter. You know what's going to happen here tonight? God is about to arise in this place. 
and some of the stuff that come tormenting you to this meeting. Brother, you're going to look around and say, where did it go? And you're going to hear the Holy Ghost say, it wasn't about you, it was about me. And I got tired of it. I got tired of them lying to you, telling you I wasn't going to do it. Now watch what I'm about to do. Brother Godwin, breathe for me. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute. Whoa, 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 whoa. What now? Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. The, the what? The high praises. The what? High praises. The high praises. If there's high praise, that means there's got to be low praise. Uh-huh. I asked him what high praise was. He said, low praise is when you have to make them. High praise is when they do it on their own. <laughs> yes, that'll work. I think there's a praise that just kind of... Yeah. There's another praise. Yes, sir. And this is how it starts. And I, I'm, I'm really trying to quit. Jesus goes to the temple and these little kids follow him in there. And Jesus said, what? I mean, here comes the high priest. It's always the spirit of religion. Do you, do you hear what they're doing? They're worshiping you, proclaiming you to be. He said, have you never read that out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? Jesus quoted from Psalms chapter 8. For out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength to stop the enemy and to steal the avenger. Uh. So God says, now, you can praise me like an adult or you can praise me like a child. An adult plays the games. It trusts in its own resources, its own strength. It's got everything figured out. But a child just... Trust. He just trust. He trusts his daddy's going to take care of him. It's going to be all right. I can just go play marbles. Daddy's going to take care of everything. And what Jesus... You know what Jesus just said right there? He said, whatever's coming out of your mouth, when you praise me like a child, which to me would be high praise, it's a praise of trust. He said, when you start doing that, Here's what I do. I tell the enemy, you can't come any closer. You can't come any closer. I got it. Now watch this. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. And Brother Galvin, let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And what? A two-edged sword in their hand. Now there's two things we've heard in this conference. Strong. The word and worship. Praise. So here's what the Holy Ghost is saying. When you feel like there's an injustice, when you feel like everything's been wrong, including me, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get the word in one hand. Because this is what it's about. And then I want you to forget everything else. And I just want you to praise me. <laughs> but Brother Morgan, it's getting by. Praise me. Praise him. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Read on, read on, hang on, hang on. We're about through, we're about through. Read on. Next verse. To execute vengeance what? upon the heathen. To do what? Execute vengeance upon the heathen. All right, read on. And punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written. Whoa, 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 whoa. To do what? To execute upon them the judgment written. <laughs> You're just worshiping, praising God. And here comes the enemy. And you say, oh, by the way, it is written. And you can never get past, devil, what is written. And it says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. 
I, some of you still don't believe that. I will, now wait a minute, wait a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm fixing to have fun now. I, 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 we sing this song. Well, I'm going to the enemy's camp. Take back what he stole. From. That's not even biblical. It's not biblical. It's not biblical. Because the law says, if you catch somebody stealing from you, he's not to give you back what he stole from you. Double it. How much? Fourfold in some cases. Some cases seven times. Now where do we get that stuff? Go into the enemy's camp. Take back what he stole. No, 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 no. I'm going to get more. No. No. <laughs> when that old lying devil comes around, you say, whoa, time out here. It ain't about me. It ain't about me. You no. ugly thing, it ain't about me. It's about you and this. And the word of the Lord says, whatever you took, I'm not just getting that back by itself. You got some interest to pay on top of it. Woo. Somebody better start thinking. Somebody better get a calculator. Some of you need to start looking at everything you felt like was taken from you. Every cent you lost, every dollar you lost, every... Yay! Yay! Because I hear the footsteps of something coming. I hear the avenger getting close by. And you'll be saying, do you have some faith? Woo! Brother Godwin, we ain't through. Hold the music. Just, just hold the music. I don't, I don't need no music. So the music. Read it. Finish it. This honor. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? This honor. This what? Honor. This honor. Have all his saints to execute whoa, upon whoa, them whoa, the judgment written. All his saints? All his saints. That includes these folks in Mississippi? All his saints. 23 states. You got to be kidding me. Uh -huh. You know what the devil's telling some of you right now? Now, it can happen for David Shatwell, and it can happen for Chester Wright, and it can happen for Mike Mitchell, and it can happen for Brother Hoyt. Hoyt. But it ain't going to happen for you. Uh huh. Now, that verse says, All his saints. See, some of you still sitting there going, but you, you, you just don't know what I lost, and you don't know how bad it hurt, and you don't know what Katrina did, you don't know what Rita did. And, And you don't know what this family did. And you don't know what my brother-in-law did. And you don't know what my grandpa did. And you just. Yeah. You know what you're telling me? You don't believe the word. Don't believe the word. This honor have what? All his saints. Is that the end of that verse? Praise ye the Lord. What are you going to do until the avenger gets here? Praise ye the Lord. What are you going to do until he repays? Praise ye the Lord. Go ahead now. I trust to be one second. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. The enemy has lied to us and told us that we'll never get back true apostolic ministry. That we're pursuing a hopeless dream. My God. That's a lie. That's a lie. I'm looking at a generation right now of young men coming on. That brother, there is such a strong apostolic anointing upon them. You talk about things that are going to come. It's going to surpass anything the book of Acts ever seen. Give me my coat. 
I won't say that again because some of you, eh, you know, now Brother Morgan, you know, we've heard that for years. Yeah, that's all right, but let me tell you what I hear right now. Let me tell you what I see right now in the spirit. You. Stay right there. Let me tell you what I see right now. I see the Avenger looking at you. And you ain't saying, but nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Because see, some of these people can't relate to some of the things you've been through. The pain, the injustice, all of it. The accusations, the attacks, everything you've gone to do in the will of God, the enemy has severely attacked you. But you know what I hear right now? I hear him coming. And he's close. And let me tell you what he's got on his shoulder. Everything and more. Look, I want you to look in there. No, 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 it's a sack. Do you see it? Don't you ever forget the promises God made to you. None of them. Not, not just promises, but where the promises were made. Because it ain't over yet. God is going to avenge you of the injustice. You hear me? I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost. God is going to repay you. You just keep your spirit right. You don't fight. You don't talk about it. You don't say anything about it. It's not against me. It's against the Word of God. Because God's getting ready to avenge you. I'll tell you in the Holy Ghost. Somebody else give me another coat. He's coming, Brother Dylan. He's coming. He's coming. I'm telling you the Holy Ghost, he's coming. Matter of fact, Brother Dylan, he is really, really close right now. Brother Dylan. Brother Dylan. Look in that sack. See those promises? I feel something in the Holy Ghost for you right now. You know what the devil's starting to tell you? You're getting too old. You'll not see the fulfillment of it. That's a lie. The greatest days of your ministry are before you. Are you ready? Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. I thought a while ago, Brother Dylan, I told them how to wait on the Avenger. Now, listen, some of you are waiting on me to come to you. Oh, some of you are waiting on me to come to you right now. And I do feel the spirit of prophecy in here right now. Strong. Brother uh, Mitchell. You said last night 7,000. 7,000. You didn't hear me. But the Lord made me a promise about San Francisco. Matter of fact, Brother Dylan, I'm going to tell you. I don't even know if you remember it. You preached Landmark one year and I picked you up and took you to the airport. I think you was with him. You was riding in the back of my van. And you went to prophesy. Remember? And you said, I see it like a stream coming through this city. But you said, it's going to be different. Don't try to put it in a box. It's not going to be traditional. Just let God be God. And it has. Everything you say has been. <laughs> and the other night, David Smith was preaching for us. Wasn't he supposed to be there on Wednesday night? He said, I want people to start prophesying. One of those young men stood up and he said, 
and it come on him. He said, the Lord said, there'll be 10,000 strong apostolic believers in this city. And he said, and from that 10,000, help me out, you will help reach 50 million. You will help impact and reach 50 million people in the world. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to mess with some of you here right now. And then we was about through. And this young boy that I was talking about got hurt the other day. He stood up and he said, I've never done this before, but I feel to say something. He said, that cow palace, we had that crusade. He said, we're going to have church there, Brother Morgan. Do you hear me? We're going to have church in there. And Brother Holy Ghost, did it not? Last week I got a phone call. Oh, Brother C.J. Benoit. Brother Morgan, I was praying for you this morning. Yeah. See, I've spent my life praying people through for everybody else and helping everybody else build churches. And a few months ago, the devil almost boxed me in. You've given your life to everybody else and what you have to show for it. The super, you hear me? You've given your life to help everybody else build their churches. You've stayed from your family and your friends and what you've got to show for it. Phone ring. Brother Morgan, yes. Brother CJ, praying for you this morning. Yes, sir. He don't know anything about that service. I feel to tell you something. I said, what's that? He said, I see thousands of believers in a city where people said, see, here's the problem. San Francisco is a city that the enemy has taken major toll against. Against every church that's ever tried to exist, it's attacked and damaged. There's apostolics that used to attend our churches scattered throughout the Bay Area by the thousands. There's a spirit of reprobation. That city's so strong, it'll make you question everything there is about God and His Word. But I can remember years ago when God told me a message when Simon Peter sent back salutations and he said the church was at Babylon elected together with you, saluteth you. And God said if I can build a church in Babylon I can build one anywhere. Right. You listen to me? I'm talking about the Avenger. Brother Morgan, I see thousands of believers in that city. He said, matter of fact, and this one when you got on it last night, I about went crazy. He said, I see city officials because of something that's going to happen that God's going to give favor in. He said, matter of fact, they're going to come to the church and ask for wisdom about it. And he said, and through all this, he said, there'll be thousands of believers that start coming. And he said, before it's all said and done, he said, what's the name of that place you had your first crusade? I said, Cal Palace. He said, Cal Palace. He said, the Lord said, you'll start having church there one of these days. I said, I said, have you talked to David Smith? He said, no, sir. And then that's why all this other stuff's been coming and all the injustices and stuff because the devil said, if I can just get you offended and bring offenses into your life, you'll miss it. I got news for you, slime bucket. I've fought too many of you and your imps. I've come through too much stuff to let somebody lie and cheat and connive and whatever they do to stop me from getting to where I need to go. Woo! Besides that, God's word is about to vindicate itself. It's not, that's not what I said. That wasn't what some man said. That was, that was prophecy. That was the word of God. God have mercy. Somebody needs to look in that sack and say, where's them promises at? Where, what was it he told me years ago? God didn't lie about all that stuff. Oh, I see. Oh, wait. My God. There's not 7,000 believers in there. There's 10. Oh, my God. Look at that. I thought I lost all that, but there it is and more. I'm going to restore the year that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar have been. God have mercy some of you you need to let your faith you need to get back to that sack and look at it and say what did he promise me what did he say when I went there oh I see it there it is you need to look at it and say when you get here I'm going to have faith to receive it we preach 
We preach, if we can just have a hundred soul revival, we're having them. Now you know where we're at, thousand soul revival. Thousand soul revival, now we're starting to have them. You know what the next mark is? 10,000. I'm not talking about in the Philippines. I'm not talking about in El Salvador. I'm not talking about in Asia somewhere. I'm talking about America. I'm talking about revival services and meetings and auditoriums where the fire of God is visible and you cannot deny that the power of God is not present and you're right. They'll receive the Holy Ghost by the thousands. How many of the Avengers coming? Now, if you don't believe that, he's going to pass you right on by. I rebuke this small thinking. Some of you have done let the... I, I, my, I should have quit a long time ago. Some of you have let all this junk get into your spirit. You've let injustices rob you of your faith. And now you've become so cynical. The only reason why you come to church is just see the show and pick it to pieces. But you hear me. There is a remnant on the earth. And they've been believing God for this. I'm going to tell you something else. I've been preaching this for years. And every time I said I get slam dunked. Not, not now. I've been slam dunked my last time. This financial stuff. We're so locked up. Somebody asked me the other day, said, what would you do if you could do this and this and this? What's stopping you from doing it? I said, money. It just seems like money's the problem for everybody right now, isn't it? I said, yeah. Man, hey, old Brother Morgan told him about money. He can't preach unless he gets on money. I got an Avenger coming. I had a missionary by the name of Brother Wolfram come through a few months ago. And he's preaching along, just, just, I mean, man, we used to have a good church. And I just told God, God, if you'll bless us, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about big buildings. I'm not, and I'm not against that. Don't, don't misunderstand me. It, it, it's just a different mindset there. You just have to understand where I'm at. I'm not worried about big buildings. I'll pour it into the kingdom. I'll send missionaries from this place. God, I told you that. I've been faithful to you about these things. I had no more said that. And that crazy brother wolf around. He said, the Lord said he'll make this a place of resources. Financial resources. Let me tell you something. We just started renting a building. The building will seat 100 people. It's just a little Cracker Jack building. The only property I have is what the building sits on. I walk out the front door on the sidewalk. They want $1.6 million for that little Cracker Jack building. Got a little house sitting behind it. It's 20-something hundred square foot. They only want 800-something thousand for it. The church was built in 1930-something. You know what I'm talking about. I said the other day, I said, okay, God. I got 40-something folks sitting out here. They don't know whether I'm coming or going. I got all this. You made us all these promises. I've been preaching this stuff. God, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you.
Are we ready? Are you really ready? It's here. It, all I can say is it's here. He's here. And it's not about your reputation. It's not your revival. It's not your finances. It's not even really your miracle. It belongs to him. Now listen. Listen. See, this, we're, we're a little, this is a little strange right here. Because some of you are waiting on. But the word of the Lord says, I'm here. I'm not coming. I'm here. Your miracle is here. Oh, your financial miracle is here. Now, see, you've heard that before. And you're like Simon Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. And some of you is going to not get all that God wants you to have because you're going to judge what he's about to do by the past. I'm challenging you tonight, don't let the haunting of empty nets stop you from what the Holy Ghost is trying to do right now. That miracle's in your body right now. I release healing into this building right now in the name of Jesus Christ. That miracle is not coming. That miracle is here right now. You hear me, sister? Come on. The miracle is in your body and in your mouth right now. If you'll speak it and claim it, it will happen this moment. Right now, it will happen. You will not go back with it. Praise him, it's done. Praise him, it's done. Open your mouth and speak it and praise him, it's done. The Avengers here tonight. Yatamaha Shatalala Hikai. Yandoro Baho Shatalala Bahakai. Anybody got any high praise in your mouth right now? Have you been faithful to the promise? Have you been faithful to the word? That's where it's at. My God. My God. My God. My God, my God. Listen, oh, 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 oh. I want everybody to listen to me right now. No, no I, I don't want, I, and this guy's not, not against you nothing. I don't want a chord of music. Not one chord hit. So I'm gonna tell you, Matt Maddox supposed to preach tonight. God, and I don't normally do what I did this afternoon, but God specifically spoke, said I told you what to say, and I tell my people that I'm close at hand, that I'm going to avenge. Now, I didn't just preach this message for you just to get a little response. No, I'm telling you prophetically tonight that the avenger is standing at your pew right now. And some of the things that God has promised you are trying to come to pass. You know what you're doing? You're like rolled at the door with Simon Peter, and she's going back in telling everybody, you don't have to pray about it no more. It's here. It's here. God had more trouble getting the church to open the door to the miracle than he did getting Peter out of the prison. And I'm trying to tell some of you, you keep, well, one of these days, one of these days. No, today is the day of salvation. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad therein. Your avenger's not coming, he's here. Your miracle's not coming down the road. Your miracle's standing looking at you right now saying, are you going to open the door by faith and let me in or not? I don't want any music. I know you're doing your job. I'm not trying to embarrass you, son. Listen, I want to warn some of you tonight. I want you to listen to me. If you're not careful... Your miracle's gonna walk right up to you tonight. Look at that space and say, ah, there's no faith here. And he's gonna walk right past you. And you're gonna end up a bitter, disillusioned saint. 
I don't believe in that stuff. God made all these promises. You're just like the man that said to the prophet, how can these things be? If God opened the windows of heaven, I've come tonight to tell you, you're exactly right. God's opening the windows of heaven as of right now. The blessing of God and the miracle of God is ascending upon you right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise him. Praise him. When he gets there, praise and faith will open the door. Give him praise right now. Praise him. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand. Receive the miracle. Receive the deliverance. Receive the healing. Receive the finances. Receive it right now. This is the day. Come on, apostolics. I know this is going to sound really ridiculous. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take, like there's a room in the door right here. And I want you to unlock it, listen to me, and open it. And if there's anything in there that shouldn't be, sweep it out. Some of you aren't going to get your miracle till you get rid of some stuff in you right now. Father, I pray right now, forgive us. Let there be a repentant prayer that comes sweeping through this place right now. If there's any, any attitude toward a brother or sister or even you, Lord, forgive us for it. Forgive us for everything that we felt like you didn't do. Forgive us for every time we felt like you were unjust. Forgive us, Lord, for now we see the error of our ways. And we're like Job. We see you now. We see it's about the word. We see it's about you. Forgive us for our arrogance. Forgive us. Come on, repent with me. Come on, repent with me right now. God, forgive us. Forgive me for every bitterness. Forgive me for every attitude. Forgive me, Lord. Clean out my heart. Forgive me for my unbelief. Forgive me for doubting you. Forgive me, Lord. I ask you to forgive me. Come on, repent. Something's happening right now. Get it out. Get it out. Some of you may need to go to somebody even here. Get it out. Open your heart. Come on. Open your heart. I'm telling you, something's moving in here right now. Open your heart. Get it out. Forgive me, God. I've let stuff in that room that I shouldn't have. But I hear you coming. And I can't afford to die with this. I can't afford to lose it now. Forgive me, Lord. I ask you to forgive me. I repent right now, God. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. While you're repenting, preacher, go get your wife. Come on. While you're repenting, go get your wife. Something's fixing to explode in this building right now.
forgive me, Lord. Create within me a clean heart. Renew within me a right spirit. Forgive me if I've ever complained or said anything that has grieved you and your word, God. Against thee and thee only have I sinned. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me right now. Come on. Come on. It's not just that person coming down the aisle for the first time that needs to repent. How about from the front to the back? Are you going to repent? He ain't coming in a room cluttered. You might as well get ready. Something's fixing to blow in this room like a wind. Some of you are going to feel it brush up against you. And when it does, you're going to know he's here. God's about to restore some things to some of you. He's about to repay the trial that you've been going through. The things it took out of you. God's kept accurate record. He's not just going to give you back that joy. He's going to give you greater joy, greater vision, greater burden, a greater testimony. It's coming. It's coming tonight. You don't have to wait another service. It's coming tonight. Matter of fact, I sense the Avenger coming in right now. Some of you are going to feel something brush up to you right now. You're going to sense it. Some of you just get lost in the Holy Ghost. Some of you is fixing to fall in the spirit. There it goes. There he is. Come on. He's getting close to you now. You can sense it. Angels have preceded his visitation. That's what you sense right now. They done filled this building. They're here. They done preceded him. He's coming to make war. He's coming to vindicate. He's coming with vengeance. Yes, he is. He's got on a bloody coat. He's coming to fight your battle. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Some of you need to get lost in the Holy Ghost. Some of you need to forget where you're at. The Avengers by now. He's coming upon you right now. You sense him. You know he's close. This is what you've been praying for. This is what you've been waiting on. Come on, this is the moment. This is the time. You need to open your heart's door and say, Here I am, Lord. Now as loud as you know how, open your mouth and praise him. Come on. Come on. There he is. Oh. Yes. Yes. Shatana Yes. Makota yaha. Shondaho. Kitana bahasha. Mahakota yaha. Come on, praise him. There it is. Praise him. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Feel that? That's healing virtue flowing through your body right now. Do you feel that? That's your miracle. Do you sense that? That's your deliverance. Do you hear that? That's your miracle. If you stop praising now, you're going to fall just a little short. Press just a little further. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
He's just a few footsteps away. You sense his breath breathing on you right now. You only feel his breath. Wait till he gets there. Wait till he steps in. Wait till he opens up that sack and starts pouring it out. Come on. Yeah. There it is. There it is. That's what you've been praying for. That's what you've been asking for. The avenger is here. Turn, lay your hand on somebody when you do. The Holy Ghost is going to impart something to them right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Some of you have been asking God to use you. There it is. When you lay your hands on them, something's going to happen. It's not going to be the normal. It's not going to be the typical. This is the day. This is the day. It's going to feel like fire coming out of your hands. Let doors swing open. Yes, God. My God. Woo. Come on up, and let 